is that which is able to create a supply for your every need. The Word of God and the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, who helps us to present God's fullness on earth in true intimacy, partnership, and fellowship with Him. Be a part of this and join us as a servant of God, Apostle Joshua Selman brings to you the Word of God with simplicity and power. This can't be it. God is so much, so much bigger. What we've heard so far cannot be all of it. Can you pray and tell him, visit me tonight. Visit me in a mighty way. Go ahead and pray. You are still praying. Say, Lord, this can't be it. You are so much bigger than this. conscious of the fact that what you see is not all there is in God. Can you tell somebody there is more? There is more. But but you see, that more is for those who can press. That more is for those who can press. I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I came with a hunger tonight. Please make sure you are praying. I came with a hunger tonight. I came with a hunger tonight. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Belongs to you. This is not a special number tonight. Let it be a communication from the depths of your spirit. Yeah. It belongs to you. Can we all sing it one more time again? My heart. My heart. My mind. My soul. My love. My life. My life. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. it belongs to you, our hearts and everything we do tonight in this place belongs to you. Are you ready to sing now the songs that we sing? The songs we sing, it all belongs to
that my heart belongs to you. Belongs to you. It belongs to you. unto God must believe that he is. If you do not believe that he is, then you will not experience his dimension as a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Greet 20 people. Just give them a big hug and return back to your seat. God bless you. You raise me up so I can stand. You raise me up to walk the strong. And I am strong.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I saw my younger brother in this place. Celebrate him. Come on, wave your hand. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight is a very serious night. Say it's a very serious night. So, just laugh with your neighbor for the last time. And let me have your full attention for the rest of this night. Yeah, I mean it. Say, neighbor, if I don't laugh with you again, don't be sad. It's just the nature of the night. (laughs) You better laugh. Stretch it now while it lasts. Hallelujah. What is it with this insect in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Ta-da-da. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we've been we've been discussing a series on family life. Those outside, can you hear me? Say praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please everyone follow. Tonight I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, do something remarkable in this place. Hallelujah. Look up, please. There are seven mountains. Remember our series on the kingdom. There are seven mountains that I believe that God is raising and anointing the body of Christ to occupy, to take over, and to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mountain number one is the business and economic world. God wants men to conquer that mountain. Mountain number two, politics and governance. God is seeking for men who have an understanding of the Spirit. Men after the order of Daniel who can legislate on behalf of territories and speak the counsel of God in our social environment. Mountain number three, family life. Family life is becoming a mess. Every arm robber was born by a woman, true or false. Every thief and tout that is threatening the society was born by a woman. So it's important that the life and the glory of God be taken to that that area. Hallelujah. Mountain number four, education. Education. The value system of the kingdom must be taken. Education is so important because that is the principle of sustainability. When you educate people, you mentor them, you train them, you build them. It brings about continuity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's mountain number five? The arts and entertainment. Arts and entertainment. Very, very important. We have a lot of musicians. We have a lot of footballers, movie actors, celebrities who can influence an entire territory just with one movie, one song, one rap and so on and so forth. So we need to take God and his value systems there. Mountain number what now? Six, the media. Any man can buy airtime and say anything, whether for or against God. We've had people speak against God directly. What's the last mountain? Huh? How can it be sports? Religion. The mountain of religion. We have several kinds of religions and 
All of their leaders and founders have a say and they have an influence over people. So we need to invade that mountain. Let's review the mountains very quickly again. Number one, business. We, we are tired of poor and broke churches, poor and broke Christians, poor and broke people. Hallelujah. We are tired of unbelievers controlling the wealth and the finances and allowing a few people to just crouch for resources. It's not of God. It's devilish. More sinners will go to hell as a result of poverty than lack of preachers. Hallelujah. Second mountain. Sorry? Politics and governance. Someone can sit down and legislate that land should not be sold for church building again. Is that true? No matter how anointed you are, you will suffer from that legislation. Recently, the gay movement was tested a bit in our senate i thank god because there is a level of decorum we have hallelujah our national assembly has not derailed from the value of the kingdom that much and so they just kicked it out at once there are countries today that they have passed certain bills into law and they did not call any preacher or pastoral association for their consultation so two people can decide to get married. Listen carefully. A man and a man. And they can choose the church they want to join them. And as a pastor, if you don't join them, they will withdraw your license. Sue you, lock up your church, pack up everything. Hallelujah. This is very disastrous. So we need men who have the fear of God. Men who understand the values of the kingdom to invade our government. Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments is not kicked out by herbalists. It's kicked out by parliament people. People who sit down and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. We can keep praying in tongues and throwing ourselves up and down. But so long as there are people who are legislating things that are not consistent with the will of God. It's terrible. In China, you cannot have more than a child now. One is okay. Praise God. It's terrible. They carry out free abortions before they pay women salary. If by any reason, whether knowingly or unknowingly, your husband gets you pregnant, you are in for it. What did I say? Whether knowingly or unknowingly. That is none of their business. You have one child, that's enough. Because they are trying to control whatever they want to control. It's terrible. So we need people here. Number three. Family life. How many of you agree with me that family life is in a mess right now? It needs a reordering. Hallelujah. The boundaries that have been kept have been taken away. We do not even know where the boundaries are again. And this is why this series is important. But let's just review the other mountains. You can get all of this in our teachings on the kingdom. The fourth mountain, education. Very important. For as long as we keep teaching people, you know, I told you one of our dreams is by the time God gives us an opportunity, we are going to build a school, a world-class school. I've shared it with the leaders. We will build a school and there are three courses we are going to add to the curriculum. One is called Spiritual Growth, Financial Education and Koinonia. These are three courses that our students must offer. Hallelujah. For you to write YEG, they say you must pass math and English. For us, you must pass math, English, financial education, and spiritual growth. Yeah. We keep raising intellectuals who have no fear and no knowledge of God. And their knowledge makes them fools. The Bible says there were two trees in the garden. One, the tree of life. The other, the tree that brings the knowledge of both good and evil. Hallelujah. The fifth mountain. Arts and entertainment, very important. Hallelujah. Some of you are gifted and skilled fashion designers, beauticians, and so on and so forth. We need people to carry the value system. We don't want the world teaching us how to dress, coming with every kind of junk and everything. We don't want the world controlling us. Let the best footballers be tongue-talking Christians. Let the best golfers be tongue-talking Christians. 
who can say no to every Jezebel that wants to come and throw down their destiny. Hallelujah. We need to take the value system of the kingdom. Mountain number six, the media. I look forward to times when we will not just own, see, I truly believe that during our time, owning a television station will be like owning a handset. Hallelujah. We are talking about set lights. We are not talking about television station. Hallelujah. Owning set lights and we pay for the bill for decades ahead of time. We can do anything we want to do. Nobody comes to tell us what to put on air or what to take out of air, how to culture and edit our words. When you are listening to Christian programs and someone says a vulgar word, they have ways of cancelling it. There are other programs that when you are mentioning the things of God, they cancel it the same way. That is nonsense. You can't stand begging the government for permission and airtime and they give us five minutes and ten minutes. If you want to worship for the whole day, let's have it. Thank God for the ministries that have television stations. It's a breath of fresh air in this wild jungle of Babylon where everything can just be posted online. Hallelujah. Then the last mountain is the mountain of religion. Religion has caused more harm to the body. It's all kinds of things. We need men who will rise up. This is where you talk about the fivefold authentic Christianity. And I'm glad to announce to you that Nigeria will present the true portrait of apostolic Christianity to the world. Yeah, this is true. Hallelujah. The mantle left. UK in the days of Smith Wigglesworth and went down to America and they merchandised it by their intercourse with Babylon and it left to Asia and now it's returned to Africa. We will show the world the true portrait of what true apostolic Christianity is. If you believe that, say Amen. amen. So today we are going to consider one of the mountains, family life. Pastor Jake started it. How many of you were blessed? Celebrate him. May God cause men to celebrate you just the way you did. <laughs> Selfish people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'm just joking. You're not selfish people. You're spirit-filled champions and generals on your way to tear down the walls of evil. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, now, please understand this. We are going to be very comprehensive in this series. We are not just talking about... For many people, when they just talk about um, relationship, the circumference of our dealing is just a guy, a lady, how they should get into a relationship and they stop there. Uh-uh. The journey starts from knowing yourself down to fatherhood, raising children, and that's why it's called family life. It's not called relationship series. Right? Family life. So it's a journey. Praise the Lord. I want you to listen because the Lord told me He will answer a lot of questions tonight. And I know a few people, I hope they are here. I told them to be here. Who sent me a lot of questions, you know, about several confusions that they've had along this area. And I told them, look, just come for the program. God bless you. Pastor Jake started by talking about a godly relationship and... We want to bring believers into an understanding of the biblical principles that govern godly relationships and family life. Everybody say after me, I'm a Christian. That means I'm a child of God. That means I'm not of the world. That means I have the value system of the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. You have the value system of the kingdom. You are not of the world. You cannot afford to do things the way people are just doing it. And it's very sad. Please look up. It's very sad. Over 90% of us in this place have learned everything we learned about relationship and family life, either from media or our friends or our bitter experiences. Hallelujah. There are few ministries that pay the price to talk about family life and the principles of godly relationships. And you see, what you don't teach people, when you don't teach people certain principles, they learn just anything that comes. Is that correct? There are pastors that castigate and condemn people and get angry at their members. 
because they don't seem to be excelling in this area, but then they will not teach the truth. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. When, when Adam said, the Lord, the Bible says in, in Genesis 3, it says, and he had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? Adam said, I had your voice, but I hid. Why? Because I was naked. And God said, who told you? In other words, that's an information you got from somewhere. So everything you have today that constitutes your mindset was told you by somebody. The Bible says, Paul speaking, he says, There are, as it were, many voices in the earth. And none of them are without effect. So we're going to be considering a lot of things. This is a very life-transforming series. And I want you to pay your rapt attention. Hallelujah. There are many people who were taught nothing about love, nothing about relationship, nothing about sex, nothing about marriage, nothing about the dignity of keeping yourself. They just, our parents just hoped that we will find the truth. Hallelujah. That has resulted to bitter casualty in the lives of many people. But tonight the Lord brings light in the name of Jesus. Very important. And the church that is supposed to be an apostolic molding place, the potter's house, where men are built and fashioned, they've either shied away from it and are not ready to take responsibility in that area and teach and train the people. Because we have this demonic teaching that these kinds of teachings should not be taught in church. We have this religious spirit. Is that true? There are churches that would dare not talk about things like this. They feel all that there is in the life of someone is just teach people how to be built spiritually, how to pray in tongues, how to love God. But those people who enter a relationship, is that true? While they are praying, the guy sees the lady and likes her. Now he doesn't know how to manage what is happening to him. Or the guy wants to get married and all he has been taught to do is pray in tongues and see visions in the realm of the spirit. And fall under the anointing. And he does not know how to help himself. There are many anointed children in the body of Christ. We are only sophisticated when it comes to spiritual things. But when it comes to the wisdom of living in our social environment, many Christians are dull of understanding. Is that true? Many Christians live like fools in their social environment. Because we lack the wisdom So you see an unbeliever who does not know God, doesn't respect the ways of God, but has a lot of wisdom when it comes to living in life. Wisdom for life. Many church folks lack this. Hallelujah. That's why you can see, for instance, unbelieving ladies. You never see a guy who just gets up like that and comes to them, but every time you want to see nonsense that happens is Christian girls. Any man that feels is emotionally troubled and he just wants to sleep around with any lady, they know how to find Christian girls. Hallelujah. And that's not because the Christian girls are bad. That's because we the preachers who should build and help them and teach them the truth are being irresponsible. All of us. Let me tell you something. Never pray for a crowd or for membership if you cannot teach and train the people. Are you listening to me? You have no business having people in your congregation if you are not ready to build them. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, it's our goal to build people holistically. So sometimes you see us teach on character and it looks as if that is all there is in God. Then we teach about the principles of the Spirit and the anointing. We teach on finance, we teach on purpose, the kingdom, destiny. It's important to touch on every aspect so that we will have believers that are built and fashioned. If you believe that, say amen. Right, so um, Pastor Jake started with the basics of relationship. Please, let's run through it. I have a lot to cover tonight and I trust God for grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The first thing Pastor Jake started telling us, and everybody I want you to look up, inside and outside. Listen to me, lift your hands everybody. Say, I receive the spirit of meekness. Say one more time, I receive the spirit of meekness. 
I humble myself to hear, to understand, to receive, and to learn. Pride is a, is a killer. There are many people who because of pride and arrogance will not listen. Many people will believe they know what they are doing. Just listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing we need to define is the concept of love. Pastor Jake said that very extensively. I will run through it. One of the biggest challenges. Please let me have one guy and one lady here quickly. One here, one here. Anybody? Taiwo, quickly. Please appreciate them. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I want you to know that a man is not another woman. Every lady say that a man is not another woman. Ladies say woman is not another man. Very important. The concept of love from the perspective of a man is far different from love. what love is for a woman. Are you following me now? The Bible says that when God brought man into being, all that was man's focus was purpose, destiny, are you following me now? And honor and authority. Man was conscious of his place, the honor, the authority, and everything God has given him. And so very quickly, I want to go very straight to the point. Every time you talk of love from a man's perspective, it means two things. Number one, honor. Number two, respect. Everybody say, love for a man means, number one, number two, no matter how you claim or think you are loving a man, if that concept of love does not translate to genuine honor or respect, you have not loved the man by his definition. Are you following me now? Very important. Ladies, understand this. When it comes to dealing with a man, men can kill because of respect. Are you listening to me? Men can kill. You call somebody Mr. when you should call him chief. He can sue you. He can make sure you die for that statement. Is that true? Men can kill. You call somebody a pastor who you should call a reverend. Or a reverend who you should call a bishop. Or a brother who you should call an apostle or prophet or whatever. He can kill you for it. Sister, your beauty can fade at once like a leaf. If you disrespect a brother. Are you listening to me? Oh, it's, it's not about ego. Ladies think it's ego. It's, it's our configuration by design. You will never get the best of a man if you do not understand what love means from the perspective of the man. So what does love mean, sisters? Honor and respect. What does it mean to honor? To hold in high esteem. To hold in high esteem. As we explore this, you will know the reason why some relationships will never work and some homes will never come together. It doesn't matter what kind of message is preached. It's not just about Satan and demons. Let's get the fundamental thing straight. So love means respect and honor. When you respect the guy, you respect his assignment, you respect his call, you respect his purpose. That's the circumference of what love means for a guy. Very important. It was on account, listen to me ladies, never forget this. Never forget this. Your primary ministry or a fixed ministry that God has put for every lady is to be a helpmeet for the man. So it doesn't matter what crusades you have to do in the future. It was the first mention of a woman was to be able to help the man in his assignment. Is that true? The Bible says, and God said, it is not good for the man I have created and given an assignment to be alone. It is not good. He said, and I will make a help meet, a help suitable. Ladies say, I'm a help suitable. Say it with confidence. I'm a help suitable. Because there are some of you that have gone through things in life that have abused this statement. You feel that you are not a help to somebody. We'll talk about that. You are a help suitable. 
And the Bible says, her desire shall be to her husband. Her desire shall be to her husband. So, when you love the man, you respect him, you honor him. Sarah called Abraham Lord. It's not a sign of worship. The word Lord means there, I esteem you. There is a beautiful position that God has given a man and a woman. And ladies, hear me, this is very important. Because there is a satanic movement trying to awaken women, in quotes, to their rightful place. And while that has worked well, it has crossed the boundary. Are you following me now? Where ladies believe that they can be a man. Ladies believe they can be everything. There are all kinds of foundations rising up, orchestrated by demons, that are bringing ladies into rebellion against their husbands and in the home. And they think, let me tell you something, your respect for the man, especially when you get married, is not just a function of his ability to provide a loan. While that is true, if your respect for the man is tied just because of his ability to provide, you are violating scripture. Because agape is love without conditions. It is a position that God has put you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We have to rush. Now we come to the world of the ladies. Guys, listen very carefully. Love does not mean purpose for the lady. Get it very clearly. Visionless brothers, destiny shaking men of God, I announce to you that love for the lady has nothing to do with your destiny. Carry your destiny and your crusades and your one million salvation target and pack it away when you are talking about love from the sister's perspective. Sisters, if I'm talking, can you say amen? Because some of you have been trying to tell the guy, you are so happy that he's seated near you now. You say, oh God, let him say it. God has answered your prayer already. Hallelujah. You see, because of the fragile nature, the fragile nature of the lady and her emotional configuration. Did you know that the emotional configuration of a lady was designed on purpose? Are you following me now? There are some of you ladies, you are trying to make yourselves become men. Stop it! Two men cannot live in the same home. Hallelujah. God designed this side of you to be able to complement the man. Some ladies are as hard as a rock. As hard as a rock. It's not a gift to your husband. No, it's not a gift. No man that I know would cherish that. I'm not talking of, I mean, being strong and stable. I'm talking of being hard, insensitive, emotionless. You are a man. You are not a woman. A woman was not designed that way. A woman was designed to respond. A man was designed to absorb. A woman will respond. Are you learning something? Those outside, if you are following me, say amen. Hallelujah. So, love for a lady means, number one, it means attention. All guys say attention. attention. Say it, attention. attention. In fact, let me say it the way I say it all the time. Maximum care and attention. Write it. <laughs> Those who are guilty are laughing. Maximum what? It's like a graph. You know that song? Nothing, no place. You must gauge that tape. Ladies will stretch you until they see the highest of the attention. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. Attention for a lady is almost like purpose for you. When you do not give a lady attention, and now we are going to define what we mean, because this word is falling on different soils. We need to redefine it. Hallelujah. It means care. Everybody say care. You must be caring. To be caring means to be sensitive to needs. To be concerned. It means time. Everybody say time. Very important. Time. 
It means affection. Affection. This is an emotional bonding. Not sex. Emotional bonding, for God's sake. Emotional bonding. If you want to be a priest, go to the seminary. If you want to get into a relationship, open your heart and allow that emotional dimension to find expression in every relationship. Praise the Lord. So, for the guy, what's the difference? Now, that does not mean, listen, please understand this. That does not mean these other qualities I mentioned in the lady are not appreciated in the life of the man. Are you following me now? But according to the order of priority. So if, if you are going out with Taiwo now, and you meet and you say, Taiwo, do you know what the Lord is doing in our midst? How was that meeting? And Taiwo is looking at you. She's smiling because she's trying to respect you. But I assure you, she's not hearing what you are saying. Praise the Lord. Guaranteed, she's not hearing what you are saying. You ate her food, licked the plate. You didn't even say whether the food is nice or not. This lady took out time, bought these heels. How many of you have seen these heels? Brothers, don't tell lies. If you appreciate it, clap for her, Jerry. And you just come with your anointing that has blinded your eyes. And all you see is souls, even on your wife who is already saved. Ladies, tell the brothers, change! Shout it again, change! Ah, you are in for a shock this night. We've not started though. Hallelujah. So look up please, we have a lot to cover. Respect and honor. There are many of you ladies, you are so rude, hostile, you wonder why no guy comes around you. Because they see themselves every time they see you. Disrespectful, you are rude, cruel, you don't talk to anybody with respect. That's how I am. No brother wants to mortgage his prophetic destiny for that kind of wife. Is that true, brothers? Let me tell you something. Don't you think prayers is covering the eyes of the brothers? They are watching. Oh yes, they are watching. The Bible says, be wise like serpents. The brothers are watching. They are watching you as you are doing this, this manly thing you are doing. No respect. You are just shouting at the guy. And somebody that has been trusting God just says, Lord, thank you for answering my prayers. I've, I've received from you. Every man is looking for a woman who will compliment him. Ladies, I want to give you a big shocker right now. There's no man that I know who is looking for a preacher. Everybody is looking for a woman who can be a wife to him. He's already a preacher. He doesn't need another one. Ladies have this funny thing that they, you feel the more you are entering the anointing, the more attractive you are becoming for the guy. It's such a big mistake. The guy is looking at his children. He already knows he's busy. You are busy just like him. The guy is looking at who can help, who can cook at home. You're already going for five crusades in a week. He won't marry you. He doesn't want to die for nothing. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? That's why we have a welfare department to help us. We can fast happily. Why? There is a consolation. Imagine if all we have is prayer band. We're in trouble as the ministers. Hallelujah. Please appreciate both of them. God bless you. So we have to get it clear. Love is very, very important. When the concept of love is not defined from the kingdom perspective, there is going to be chaos and anarchy. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady look at a guy? Guys, when the lady comes to you and says you are selfish, ah, me, selfish, I'm providing money, I'm paying the children's school fees. 
Hallelujah. And the lady is saying you are selfish. And you are now wondering, is it that I'm not purpose driven? Am I not praying enough? What she's saying is, you are not defining love from my perspective. Are you following me now? Very important. Now before we start, Pastor Jake spoke about it here, but let me define certain things. The qualities that a guy must have before you think of entering a relationship and a lady. We have to talk about that quickly. There are qualities. Listen. Please look up. If these qualities are not in you, and you have been dreaming of asking a lady out in this place, you better wake up from that dream. Wake up in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Arise, thou that sleepest, and let Christ give you light. So wake up tonight and listen. There are many brothers that think because you are macho and broad-chested and tall, dark and handsome, it just means that every lady is standing desperate like a leaf. Better repent of your pride and listen to these qualities that we have to explain. Is anybody following me tonight? I already told you to laugh from the beginning. Look up, please. The Bible says for us to have no business with the unfruitful work of darkness. Before you even consider a relationship or marriage with anybody, let me tell you something. That person must be genuinely born again. Write it. This is not part of the quality. This is what even qualifies you to begin to look at other qualities. Must be born again. We live in a generation where ladies are becoming the Holy Spirit who have the exclusive ability to change any Romeo they like. Let me tell you something. Come out of what you watched in that Nigerian film. Don't get up and go and yoke. See, look up. Every lady, every true godly lady must submit herself to the man. The only choice you have is to choose the kind of head you submit to. Hallelujah. Don't choose any kind of head that will come and kill you. He must be born again. What does it mean to be born again? To submit to the governing authority of Christ. The governing authority of the word. A man that does not submit to the word of God can kill you. There is nothing to give him boundaries. There is nothing to define the terms of his relationship or marriage with you. There is nothing to convict him. You can't afford to go out with a man who is not born again. There are many of us, it's those that are not born again that you like. You say they are nicer than the brothers. But they will take you to hell. And you won't see any of the brothers in hell. We are all going to heaven. Hallelujah. Say he must be born again. Guys, say she must be born again. Every lady that threw every great man in the Bible and in history were nice and beautiful ladies. Most of them did not have respect for the things of God. Hallelujah. If you marry a lady that is not born again and is not serious with God. Some of you say, uh-uh, but the guy is nice. Say that day Pastor Jake even saw him. Didn't he greet you, sir? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, I'm answering a lot of questions here. Do not confuse morality with the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. Are you listening to me? Willpower can only take you so far. You do not know the power of, I mean, Satan and demons outside of the word of God. When you know that, you will know that morality is not enough. See, let me tell you something. You can get a course you don't like for five years. You can struggle it, wrestle it, complain about it and just finish. But when you get married, after 40 years, that man will change and wreck your life. And you will wish you were dead. Some of you, that's the case in your families. Now you have an opportunity to choose. Hallelujah. So are you ready now? 
Now, there are certain qualities that a Christian brother should have. We are not talking about marriage yet. We are talking about relationships now. So every brother, every Christian brother or Christian sister that desires a godly relationship, we expect you to be building yourselves or to have built yourselves in this area. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, look up. I know that if I'm to call two or three ladies now, we don't have the time, and ask you, what kind of man do you want? You first smile and say, hey. Hallelujah. You just carry your handbag. It's already written there. Because you've been praying about it. You bring out your hundred point agenda list. The guy must have the ability to carve his eyebrows. He must understand about nail filing and the rest. We don't want a brother with oil on his face as if they fried egg on the face. He must be posh and clean. Oh, you think we don't know? Hallelujah. I like a brother that will do this, do that, do that. You want a brother that is exposed. Don't want anybody who will be disgracing you in the public. Praise God. You go to a restaurant before they see anything. They've not even prayed. They have started disgracing you. He thinks he's in his room. Now you are embarrassed. Ladies have a lot of things. But let me tell you tonight. Look up please. All those things will not work. Period. Did you hear me? All those things will what? Because even you, you are not prepared for that kind of man. The only man that fits all those qualities you are writing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not looking for a wife. But he has made us his ambassadors. Are you listening to me? You cannot say, oh, this guy must... Be. There are ladies who are so meticulous. Say, if I look at his skin, it must be fresh and this. Let me not see any funny thing. It must be without blemish. No, the lamb that will be slain. Listen. It's not wrong. It's just childish. You wrote it when you were in secondary school. Now you came to the university. Tear it. You are growing. That's, that's just the remedy. What you need is not deliverance. It's just growth. The Bible says, when I was a child, you were writing that when you were trying to keep yourself busy to write SSC. This is almost 10 years now. Tear that thing. Grow up. Face a real world like a woman and a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain virtues, Pastor Jakes called them, and I'll write it, cardinal virtues. That means there are some virtues that eventually they will develop themselves. Listen, ladies, look at me. If you are looking for a perfect man, you have no ministry in the life of that man. Are you listening to me? The purpose of the lady is to complete the man, to help his inadequacy. So if you are looking for a man who is already perfect, you don't have a ministry in the life of that man. Praise the Lord. Mm. Are you getting blessed? Alright, ladies, what qualities should you look for in, in the guy? And guys, these are the qualities you should be building yourself in. Number one, honesty and sincerity. Quality number one. Any guy coming around your life who is not honest and sincere, pack your load and run. Don't pray about it. I'm already telling you the answer. Run! Honesty and sincerity. The brother must be honest. Must be sincere. You can't be at the back of Ribadu. That, you know that path. That dark path. You are just sitting there and they just call and say, Ah, maybe your wife or your girlfriend or whatever calls you and say, Ah, I've, I've arrived in Lagos. Kai, I just got there right now. And she says, are you serious? Well, how was the journey? She says, I'll call you later. I'm even too tired to say, I understand. Immediately you drop. You just lie to the girl that is a distance call. 
is your relative from UK that is calling you. No sincerity. Or you're calling one lady and the lady just comes and you pick up the call. Ah, you safe. As, as the money entered, that's not enter. Hurry up now. Don't waste my time. I, I have a beautiful girl here to buy something for her. Why are you wasting my time? And you are lying. Sisters, are the brothers not like that? Brothers, don't feel bad. You know me. I always balance the equation. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dishonest brother will produce a dishonest husband, a dishonest father, a dishonest leader, and will kill you. Are you listening to me? Deal ruthlessly with dishonesty. It's better for the brother to say, Mio, I'm trusting God. God has not helped me yet. This shoe you are seeing is my only one. This trouser is the only one. This shirt is the only one. But the spirit of faith is in me. You are seeing me pray in every koinonia. I'm sweating in your presence. You are seeing that we are flogging out this thing. The door will open one day. Is that correct? Many of you ladies, you like guys lying to you. You have itchy ears. You like it so. The guy just comes to you and he's laughing and he just says, Hi, how are you? And this is not how he speaks, so just because you came. And the guy comes and he's bouncing and he likes you. And he says, uh, Sweetheart, I was wondering. Um, so let me talk to this guy. I need to be at the airport tomorrow. What's your tomorrow like? I'm going to take the first flight tomorrow. I have to be back. There's something my, my dad sent a consignment. And can you imagine? This is boys. You know, they are taking my humility for granted. And the lady is melting. Hey. You know it's a lie. Your roommates are watching from their window. You know it's a lie. You like it so. You go back and you carry the lie and you are telling your roommates. You are, you are saying it as if you don't believe him. But you are saying it to increase your reputation. You are claiming that you don't like it. But you are telling everybody, shut up if you don't like it. Why are you telling everybody? Say, can you imagine? That guy came and met me and he was talking about one airport in me. He wants to play with me. Sister B, can you imagine? That guy, and you are claiming that you are not enjoying what he's saying. Honesty. Number two. The guy must be teachable. Ladies say teachability. Any brother that is not teachable is going to drown you. You will follow him together and enter an ocean of trouble and he will drown you. And brothers, this is where we have to be very careful. Because you see, we guys are egotistic in nature. Are you following me now? It's very difficult. There are some brothers here. God must help you tonight. Your deliverance has started. From your culture, women don't talk to men. From your culture, women don't advise men. Is that true? Some of you are from royal families. And you are taking your village everywhere you go. Even inside your relationship. So you are with the lady and she's trying to advise you. And she's saying, um, sweetheart, have you considered this? We say, look, let this be the last time. Even the Bible said, wife, submit. Submit means shut up. Don't try me, oh. You are entering the fire and the lady is saying, Honey, look at this. We are entering fire. Say, which fire? Guys, fire is burning. You are saying, which fire? Where is the fire? And later you carry the girl and put together in the fire. And it's burning two of you. Later you say, ah, it's true. This thing looks like fire. When it has burnt you and it's almost killing you. Brothers, be teachable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of great strength. These ladies may look like they don't know anything, but I tell you something. If you are humble and you can listen, you will learn a lot of things. Any brother that is not teachable and arrogant and just believes you are the alpha and omega of that relationship, the lady should shut up. Even if she's speaking nonsense, one day she'll say something that is sensible. You must listen. Many husbands have entered into trouble. Many husbands have done different things that, that one plot of land that somebody came to swindle you. Land of 10 million, you sold it for 2 million. Your wife was telling you, be careful, be careful. Say, be careful for what all these women, they are too emotional. 
There are many of you, if you will be teachable. You know what teachability is? Teachability is your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept when you are wrong. That's why we taught ourselves in our character building series on four words. What's the first one? Can you remember, everybody? What's the first one? Please. You must say please. What's the second one? I'm sorry. Apologize when you are wrong. Number three. Thank you. You must tell people if they do good for you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. What's the last one? God bless you. You must bless people. So you must be teachable. Let's hurry up. Number three. Brothers, you must be visionary and responsible. There are many guys, you have not finished managing yourself. Don't add a woman into it. There are many guys, you, you have not led yourself. You don't have self-management. You are careless. You are indisciplined. Now you want to bring another lady and add her into your predicament. You must be visionary. When you hold a lady and say, we are going out, where are you going to? I always give this example. How many of you have climbed bike? And the bike man told you, you were asking him, do you know this place? Do you know CGC? Before he finished, he said, yes. Later, he starts going with you. He just passes somewhere. He says, oh God, this is not the road. He says, oh sorry, I forgot. Then he turns back. Later, he comes and just passes and he's heading towards Rema. And you say, oh God, stop. Do you know where we are going? He says, I thought you knew the place. That's how many guys are. You just bring the bike and hit the seat and tell the lady, oh yeah, climb. The lady, I used to say, climb. Is it not me? Once they climb from gear one, you go to the last one. You are just speeding. The lady says, sorry, you, where are we going? He says, leave me. Are we not? Have we arrived there? Be patient. After 10 years, you have not defined where you are going. Never go out with any guy you don't know where he's taking you to. You better know where you are going, no? Don't lead yourself like a sheep to the slaughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very important. He must be responsible psychologically. <laughs> a guy who is always crying like a baby does not need relationship. He needs help and growth. Somebody just say, Kai, your hair is looking bushy. He's crying. It's the lady that says, come. <laughs> he says, see, things happen like that. The guy says, why is everybody doing this to me? You are embarrassing the lady. They'll say, Abba, sister, is it that there was no guy? Which baby did you go and carry like this? You enter a program, there's a seat here. They say, sorry, stand up for somebody else. The guy is already crying. The lady now stands up to hold him. I say, don't cry. You are not ready for a relationship, my brother. Please, please, please. Focus on your finances or something else, your spiritual life. Because let me tell you something, there are pressures you are going to absorb in your life. Hallelujah. As a leader, you don't let people see your tears anyhow. It will kill their spirits. Hallelujah. Every lady needs a man that she can be secured around. A man that can protect her. Was told of a story that armed robbers came somewhere. Open this door now. Bow, bow, bow. The man just stabbed the wife and said, Stand up. No, he, he was pretending like he was sleeping. She just said, Honey, honey, as if he was sleeping, honey, you must wake up. Oh. Are you hearing what is happening? He said, I'm hearing now. Why would you just keep quiet? The guy was sweating and shaking. True life story. The woman got up and started praying in tongues around her house. They were shouting, if you let us open this door by ourselves, this and that and that. Do you know that eventually when the armed robbers left and the woman came, she found the man dead. Yeah. What killed him? So who is protecting who? There are many of you, you like women, but you are very careful. You don't have courage. You are not emotionally balanced. Please don't think of getting into a relationship. That you'll be crying all the time. As if you are going to just one. You know how people go to just one and they cry. At a point the lady is feeling, Oh God, did you bring me to protect this? What did you bring me to do in this life? You are not a man. Hallelujah. So, that, that's it for the guys. 
cardinal virtues. Ladies, brothers, if you love your destiny and where God is taking you, make sure you look at this. Number one, the ladies must be submissive. Every lady says submission. Look up, please. Submission is not weakness. Submission is the ability to bring your strength under control. Are you following me now? What is submission? The ability to bring your strength under control. You see this from many of our mothers. The man can be shouting, saying something, and, and our mothers are not wrong, but they will just keep quiet. You will be wondering and say, if I were my mother, eh? Abba, we enter the same trouser. See, my mother, my father is always doing with her. She is even doing like Musev. Eh? All these village with me. Abba, no man can try that. You better shut up. Oh. You better shut up. Because your mother was once a young CC like you and was bouncing like that. Ask her why she's calm now. Hallelujah. Many ladies have this funny. There are many things that we are doing that we don't know is childishness. This night you will see that it's just sheer childishness. Hallelujah. Submission. Very important. Bringing your strength under control. Number two. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm just summarizing what Pastor Jakes has already preached. So we have to run. Number two, teachability. Ladies, you must also be teachable. There are some ladies, Gamaliel. You always teach everybody. Gamaliel was the person who taught Paul. Some of you are Gamaliel. You sit in the midst of brothers. Do you know this? The brother comes to talk to you. Yeah, just like a Proverbs this and that said. This and that. And you think you are impressing him. The guy just gets up. Just tells his friend, baby, now let's just go somewhere. That's not it. It's not the way forward. This is nonsense. As you are talking, the lady is just saying, this is not a wife. This is a man. You are not teachable. There are some of you, no man can sit you down and talk to you. No man. You do something, so even if it's a pastor, you do something, Pastor Jack said, alright, two of you come to see me. He said, me, see you. Nobody brought me into this world though. Even my father doesn't, you see that? So who do you want to come and marry you? Who do you want? Be fair. Who do you want to come and marry this kind of trouble? Teachability. Number three. Sisters, you must be physically attractive. The brothers are not just spirits. They dwell in bodies. They have eyes. My friend Ejimi says, love is blind. Marriage will open your eyes. Sisters, look up. Brothers, look up too. My brother, you better don't deceive yourself. If you are going far. Huh? And you don't want to run it. Now, when I talk of beauty, beauty is a relative statement. But you must, don't carry a lady that you will not be proud of. Huh? You just see somebody says, my younger, is just my younger sister. Or you just look and say, oh, there's one lady that is disturbing me. Oh, me, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. You kill the lady. If you behave to a lady like that, you don't deserve her. Get out of her life and let the person who deserves her come in. Are you following me? Very important. Don't find yourself. You must be proud of the lady. Ladies, be physically attractive. That does not mean be pornographic or nude. You are a Christian. It means be nice. You are young. Don't celebrate your 50th birthday when you are 22. Be patient. The time will come. And all the brothers say... Amen. It doesn't mean you must have all the money. Look, we are watching. Brothers are happy when they see a nice sister. You are, you are, you are taking care of yourself. How much is powder? The type we use, how much is it? The type you use is 10,000. That's so expensive. Get the normal. Who will know? Who will know? It's only among yourself, ladies, that you know. Will we know? See a lady just comes, there's, there's fats on your face, oily face, you are just moving, walking anyhow. You are just walking any. you can't even compose yourself. They are sharing food. 
join the line, you want to collect your due. All these kind of attitudes, the brothers are watching. You need to tell yourself, myself, behave. Behave. The Bible says you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Behave. Hallelujah. You must be physically attractive. If you have one shirt, iron it. Don't carry a shirt that is twice your size. Yes, your mother gave it to you. Adero tell us. Reduce it. Abba. Must everybody know it was a gift? You just carry a needle and fold it and fold it and clip it. Can they reduce it? The brothers are not idiots. Why we are praying in tongues? Sha da 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 da. Yeah. Please, brothers, look for what looks like your future. Hallelujah. Can I come to the brothers now? Oh, I must come. You know me. Hallelujah. You see, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't criticize anybody until you have done twice what the person has done once. Hallelujah. Brothers, if you want that kind of glamorous lady, you must start working on yourself as up. Are you following me now? There are many brothers, you are bushy, you don't comb your hair, the dust is dry season, but you still see at the back of your shoe, mud of rainy season. You are, no, I will talk, you must be physically attractive. You wear one, one singlet for two months, It's easy to wear something on top. Who will know? You can't buy perfume of 500 naira. You just come, you are sweating, and they hug your neighbor. Before they do anything, you want to hug. How much is short? At least that's the basic one. Listen, you are a leader. You don't bob your hair. This side is more than this side. It's not like maybe it's a style. It's just disorganization of your hair. Because for a long time, you can't even go to the barbing salon and say, just have it, let it be nice. You finish bathing, even oil, you just, you are trying to comb it, you don't know whether it's back or front, you throw the comb away and get up, just come for koinonia, and you just come and you are smiling. You think it's everybody that is smiling with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your clothes are always rumpled. Always. Always. Always rumpled. Hmm? Go and wear one kind of thing and carry one one kind of tie. You will stop here. You now wear it and you are coming and you are just eyeing the sister. She's not looking at you. I assure you. I assure you. I assure you she's not looking at you. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. You have to run. You must be physically attractive. Both parties. Be smart. We are not saying go and borrow everybody's clothes to come for koinonia with. Uh uh-uh. uh. If you have been doing it, stop. It's not necessary. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. Hallelujah. You are borrowing your roommate's shoe every week. The day your roommate says it's coming for miracle service too, on that day you wear your palms and sit outside. Even if you spams you have, wear it honorably. Polish it. Can I tell you something, brothers? I discovered something with ladies. They are not as materialistic as we think. I tell you, there are some ladies that love God and they are willing to start and go with you only if you will be honest. Sisters, is that true? It's not all of you that should say yes because some of you are very materialistic. I'm coming to you. So this was a summary of what Jake said. Hallelujah. Very important. 
So how many of us have been blessed by those qualities? How many of us know that there are some of them we need to walk in ourselves? Don't lie now. Lift your hands. Don't pretend. I appreciate your honesty. This is why we are here. And God is helping us. Do you know why you need to work on these qualities? It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. But make sure there are honest efforts. Are you following me now? So that you can be a blessing to one another. Everybody say, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Say one more time, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Hallelujah. Alright, so we're going to talk quickly about entering into a relationship now. The process. The process of entering into a relationship. Again, let me have one lady and one guy. Please, can we have them quickly? Quickly, we have to. One lady, Taiwo, please come again. Aaron, God bless you. One lady and one guy. Hallelujah. Please look up. There is no crime. Everybody look up, please. There is no crime, brother, in seeing a sister that you love and you find yourself affectionate about. It does not make you unspiritual. MOG, hello. Can you hear me? There is no crime. <laughs> there is no crime. Hallelujah. When you find out as a brother, a good Christian brother, sharing the word in a, in a, in a meeting like, look at Koinonia, inside, people are inside, outside. Now you, are, you have been seeing this sister, she's in the choir. Her name is Taiwo. Hallelujah. Always ministering. Something is moving. Something is changing. Hallelujah. Please listen. I have to rush. We have to be out of here. Now, listen, brothers. When you want to end, let me look at look at me. Do you know why this thing keeps backfiring for some brothers? Let me tell you one of the reasons. The Bible says the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. He doesn't know the road to the city. The reason why many of you, it's not necessary because you are not nice. You don't know how to do this thing. You will not seek advice. You will not seek counsel. You just see a lady like this after Koinonia. Worship team. They are holding their hands to pray. You can't even wait. Let them finish the prayer. You've got to stand close. You are just moving around. You can't wait. They say hug 20 people. You didn't hug anybody. You are just gallivanting around the worship team square here. As soon as they finish, they say, Sister, please, can I talk to you? Now the lady says, well, for the benefit of doubt, we just finished fellowship. Say, I've been watching you. I have a policeman. You have been watching her. What else? I've been watching you. And uh, the other day, I, I, was, I was talking with my friend. Just says, please, please, I know where you are going. Please, I beg you. Just save yourself any stress. It won't work. You just get up and go to your room. Say, this colonial lady self now. I'll, let me just, Kukuma be sitting outside. You look, you, you will pray. These are people that are seeing us pray. They know I'm a man of God, yet you won't say yes. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Everybody say friendship. Say it, friendship. This is the first step to entering a relationship. You can't come and meet a perfect stranger because of your unbelieving roommate did it. You just saw one, one, one lady who just came in hundred level in her innocence. Her mother told her, when you go here, don't do it. Now the guy just came to threaten her. And the lady, out of fear, she just said, oh yeah, yes. Because she doesn't know what to have. You too, you were inspired by that testimony. You now got up and met a Christian sister who has been sharing the word. You just come and meet her. Say, I want to marry you. Pray about it. What is wrong with you? Eh, your father did it. So what? Change. See, listen. If your wife is your best friend, that naturally tells you that the probability of finding her among your friends is very high. Correct? The best friend is the best among friends. Is that true? 
some of you, you don't have friends. This is what makes the sister know that you are ready to enter a relationship. You don't work with anybody. You don't greet anybody. In ch- Suddenly, ah, after miracle service, you have said Romeo and I worshipped him. You, you don't greet anybody. You are not in any group. After prayer, band finishes praying, you just turn. You are, you, you are always alone. You are talking alone as if you are out of your mind. When the sister starts seeing you, she is even afraid. She doesn't know whether you are fine or not. Something wrong with this brother? Does he need counseling? You must be friendly. Are you listening to me? Listen. Guys, let me give you a big secret. If you can make a lady laugh genuinely and sincerely, you have taken some good steps into that journey. I give you a tip that will work for you. Hallelujah. Don't carry your boring, boring life. Your roommates should test run whether you are sociable or not. They are always running away from you. Ah, flog it in your room first before you go and disgrace yourself. It's one lady. You are in love. You are pretending like you are not in love. You are just boning your face and coming to the girl. You say, can I see the girl? Say, I'm busy. Come now, you yourself. Be friends. One of the best ways of being friends is join a department. Join a department. One of the benefits of a department is that it will help your social life. Is that true? The worship team are so, so, if you see them, you'll be amazed. They love one another. Some of them were not like that when they started. Is that true? The ushers, ushers, are you there? They love themselves. Who do you love? Who loves you? You don't know. When you enter, when you see service in the house of God is a big helper to take you out of inferiority and complex. They'll tell you, lead prayer. Now you lead prayer. And when you lead prayer, ah, after the prayer meeting, Tyler says, wow, that was nice. So pure, sincerely love. No strings attached. You do, you are happy. You didn't know how to do it. Now you can watch Aaron do it. You are, you are learning. Who will know that you don't know? Tomorrow now you come, they say, oh, go on another. You are making progress. Are you making progress? It's not like you, are, you join the department with the intention to marry the lady. But you are becoming sociable. It's giving them an opportunity to see your sincere heart. Is that true? One day the lady comes late, you stand up for her. Ah, ah. She says, wow, that was so kind. You are learning. You are reducing your journey, you don't know. Some of you come from nowhere. You see people who have been functioning, they are taking their time. You think you have the spirit of, you just run from nowhere. They don't know you, you have no history. You just came for koinonia twice. You think you want a wife, you just come and carry anybody. We won't give you our ladies like that. Come and sit down. Share the word of God. We want to be sure of the kinds of things our ladies, uh, you, they can't be praying in tongues. You come with your Babylon for wherever because you did talking for two weeks. You think it's enough to carry them. No, sir. They are not that cheap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Entering into a relationship. Take time to build friendship. See, not friendship for the purpose of relationship. Be a free person. Be happy with people. Are you listening to me? And ladies, there are some of you, you are not helping yourself. Make sure when brother smile and greet you, you just say he likes me. Habba! You are in a church, what kind of insecurity is that? A brother smiles at you, he just hugs you. You go back and say, I've been watching, it's a lie. It's a lie. Please, this guy is pressing into God. It's a lie. Don't blackmail him, he loves God. You just see a brother like you, and the next thing you start becoming edgy and funny. Everybody say friendship. So, Aaron begins to be friends. Maybe from department or something. He may be in the same department. He may be in a different department. You know, you are just serving in the house of God genuinely. It gives room for the sincerity of your heart to be tested. Are you listening to me? You are consistent in the body of Christ. At least the lady sees you. You are a face that they know around. She knows what you are hearing. You know what she's hearing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. 
Never go out with a guy who you don't know who is feeding him and you don't know what is entering his head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Many people think this is an act of immaturity. Many of you do not know. Look at me, brothers. Let me give you a secret. If you don't respect us, these ladies respect us. Are you listening to me? By the time you start meandering around them, they will call us. They will say, sorry, oh, this guy has been roaming around, not to be presumptuous. And you, you think you are playing smartness. Every time you see us, you will claim as if the lady is this and that, while the lady has already told us. And you will be disgracing yourself. Hallelujah. Very important. Seek counsel. There is nothing wrong. We are not demons. You can ask Pastor Jake. There are times that he comes to tell me, ah, so so and so so person. This guy likes this person. You can even see me jumping and say, yay. Our people are entering good relationships. There are some relationships when we hear you have entered, we start crying. We start crying. You don't know the guy, but we, we know him. Hallelujah. Please seek counsel. Seek counsel. Don't seek counsel from unbelievers. Who tell you just try, oh, there is an age where guys will be coming, oh, you will get to an age, nobody will come, oh, just try. Uh uh. Hallelujah. When you are entering into a relationship, friendship, friendship. Now, that does not mean you cannot sit. I know of stories of perfect strangers. They, they call it what they call it, love at first sight. I don't know what probability of it works in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Seek counsel. And then, bless you, sir. The next step is listen, go to God. And I, I want to talk a bit here about the concept of the will of God. Look up, please. As a brother, you love God. You are not a prophet, you are not an apostle. You are just a sincere believer who loves God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now you see Matilda. You've been looking at her and truly, oh, genuine love, not lost. If you find out that what is wrong with you is lost, come for counseling, not relationship. Counseling. We won't condemn you, but we'll help you. Genuine love, sincere love. Now you are looking at Matilda. Ah. -ah. You've sought counsel. You go to God in prayer. Listen, listen. Now, I want to correct a very erroneous concept about what people call hearing God. How many of you have heard what they call vision, seeing vision? That has put a lot of brothers under pressure. Please and please. The vision in Joel 2 was not women. Is that clear? Don't your brothers, please. I deliver you from any heart attack you want to give yourself to force yourself to dream dreams and see visions. There is nothing wrong. The Bible says God is at work in us both to will. Hallelujah. I love God. My heart is sincere. Are you following me now? Now Aaron sees Matilda and you just say, oh, did you have a vision? It has made a lot of brothers to come with stories about their concept of the will of God. Because they know that if they, that's the gate pass into your life. So they, they've tried and tried. They just say, oh yeah, talk. God told me, please, open the gate for me to enter. Be careful. God shows people visions. You don't see vision for any area of your life. When it comes to relationship, you suddenly become a prophet. Who sent you? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? The, don't be embarrassed. Ah, ah, the other day, you saw Rose. And ah, when you saw Rose, even you, you wouldn't lie. You were praying. The prayer point just disappeared. You cannot even know what I was saying again. And it was sincere. Ah, you try to say myself, behave, please. I'm in the presence of God. You were trying to look at Pastor Jake. You were seeing Rose again. Ah, something is happening. Don't feel embarrassed. Are you hearing me, brothers? Don't feel embarrassed. The only thing is check it. Don't be foolish. Some of you, if you see that to you, that's God said. Uh-uh. That's not God said. 
Because there are some brothers that what is happening to you is just infatuation. Ah, you saw this lady's hair. And wow, you are smiling. One day you see her coming out of Ribadu in the morning. She has not taken her bath. You just hear and say, ah, is that the girl I saw? Ah, I've changed my mind though. And you want to marry her. She will be pregnant too. Don't forget. Help us, Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? If God shows you a vision, if you are sitting and you just see Abigail, C21. Is that how I now, Ribadu? Ribadu is your wife. You just say, Yes, Lord. Abigail, where are you? Better come. Don't stop my destiny. You don't do that. The, listen, the Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. And you come, you can come to Pastor Jake and say, sir, this is what I saw about this guy. Because I saw this about this guy. I saw this guy ab about the lady. They can be able to help you. Are you listening to me? Don't just take initiative on the strength of your vision alone. Your vision can mislead you. The Bible says we see in part. And so we what? prophesy in part. Are you getting blessed? Please, listen. You love God. You are praying for a life partner. You are saying, oh God, please bring a lady into my life who will love you, who will fear you, who we can stand together and accomplish the purposes of God for our lives. Hallelujah. Suddenly you come for miracle service. You just see Natina. And now you, you cannot even describe what is happening to you. Mama. <laughs> now Mama is wondering, ah, ah, Aaron, what is happening? I saw this lady just once and I... Many of you feel embarrassed. You even cast it. Ah, ah, it may not be demonic. Are you listening to me? Try to establish good friendship with the person. And when you feel you've received advice and the time is right, listen, that takes me to the next step. Brothers have courage. Ladies don't kill. I think, sisters, we need to tell the brothers this. Say, brothers, we don't kill. Speak. Say one more time. Brothers, don't look at yourself. Look at the brother. Brothers, we don't kill. Speak. The brother says, sisters, I'm not afraid. Listen. There are some of you that kick any guy that comes. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Koinonia, hear me inside and outside. Never, please, let me start with the sisters. Never see a brother, no matter how much you esteem him, that he comes to you and then you try to just do anyhow with him and say, hey, you don't know that shoe has size. You got up. Forget. Don't let Koinonia fool you. I'm not your mate. Oh. Don't be stupid. If not because of Koinonia that is the house of God. You, you, you cannot see your type. You come and stand. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brother you are laughing at today. Wait and see the promises of God in his life. By the time what he's speaking comes to pass. You will be amazed. Are you following me now? I was told a humorous story that there was a time Bishop Oedeko asked a part. I was told, I don't know if it's true. Please, please, so I had it too. If it's not true, accept it as fiction. There was a man of God. <laughs> and the man of God said he asked one lady and she said no. He kept quiet. Then it was, there was nothing, just the promises of God. The treasure in earthen vessels locked up inside. Later on, he asked his current wife and she said yes. Some years later on, they were in a program and he saw the former lady. Now she was also married. And he told his wife, he said, see, I asked this woman. And she said no. The woman walked to her and said, thank you for telling my husband no. You think that woman will sleep? Hi! You must say, God, no. This is how my destiny passed me by. Many of you want ready-made. You don't want to pay the price and bills. Hallelujah. 
when a brother wants to talk to you, please give him listening ears. Especially when he comes with a heart of sincerity and responsibility. Even if you are not interested in the relationship, present yourself in a way and manner that will not discourage him. There are some brothers, when they ask one sister since 2010, they've not asked another one again. One day you wanted to ask the girl, she just, she was just, you were going here, she just came out, you just turned as if you want to clean a chair. No courage, your heart is failing you. Everybody say, take courage. take courage. Sisters, help our brothers. It's not easy to come and stand before a lady and start rapping and talking stories. Hallelujah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage. Brothers, is that true? Especially when you start giving one kind of face. As if you don't like it. You finish praying in your room and say, God, change my story. Give the brother a chance. Give him a chance, please. Hallelujah. Is that true? There are many brothers here that are sitting. They want to enter a relationship. But ladies, you are hostile. You are rude. You leave an impression in the heart of the brother that will injure him. It's not fair. Is that true? And then brothers, take it easy. I know that no means wait for a guy. So if the lady tells you no, just don't say me, I don't take no for, I would, ah, 30 missed calls between Koinonia and her room. 30 missed calls. 5 text messages. 500 naira recharge card. You have called all her friends. Take it easy, brother. Haba. Take it, let her think. You say, I can't sleep. Uh-uh. You better check whether it's lost or love. Whatever is pursuing you, run to court. Run to court and go and flog it out with destiny. Don't be a pest around the lady like that. You are going for a lecture, you just hear it. Ah! In fact, you know, I was about to call you. That's how you follow her. She's in the restaurant. You go there. Money that you wanted to go to Jordan Bookstore with, you pay for her food. Now you have not eaten. You are hungry. You've not done your assignment. You are failing. You are emaciating. You are dying. What is wrong with you? Your roommate say, what is wrong? You say, love. It's not love. Hallelujah. Are you learning something, please? Praise the Lord. Very important. Make sure you are convicted. There are some brothers here. Please look up and I must warn you. Everybody, say double dating is wrong. Say one more time, double dating is wrong. There are guys that have ladies in every faculty. Every faculty you have a representative. And they don't know. It's not good. You are, you are a Christian. I hope you know that we don't believe in dating. Are you listening to me? In the kingdom there is nothing called dating. Correct? You know what dating is, ladies. Let me explain to you so that you hate it very well. Dating is that you parade many ladies. The bachelor. Ask some of them out. Sleep with some of them. Do all you can do. And then start editing them one by one. One by one. One by one. Until you find the one that is suitable with you. You've slept with them. You've taken them out. Which lady... Do you know that every lady you see is somebody else's wife? You don't treat ladies like that. Is somebody learning something? Double dating is very wrong. Very, very wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So brothers, get close to the lady, develop courage and talk. Sisters, be open. Don't conclude on a guy. And just say, this is not my kind of guy. What do you know about all your destiny? Somebody you are seeing today that you say may not be your kind of guy, may be the greatest blessing in your life. Is that true? Hallelujah. Let's rush. We have to pray. Now, let's assume you successfully get into the relationship. Say amen. amen. So you have flogged out issues and you are now in the relationship. What do you do? Please write. These are things that you must observe while during the relationship. Number one, practice communication. Practice what? Communication. 
one of the number one killer of marriages and relationships is no communication. Talk. No matter how bad issues are, talk. Talk. How many of you know that a quiet person can be more dangerous than a noisemaker? Because if somebody is quiet, you don't know what the person has in his heart or her heart. Talk. Talk. Hallelujah. See, because no matter how anointed you are, listen, when you get into a relationship, are you following me? Patience, come. When you get into a relationship, now let's assume Abel is going out with patience. Abel, stand up. Assuming, come now, all the open. Hold our hands. Let's save time, please. Hold our hands. Smile, you too now. Smile. Alright, come. Now, they are in a relationship. Please, everybody listen. Do you know, every time people come to me for counseling and prayers for relationship, I tell them, whenever you enter a relationship, please listen. See yourself as two farmers. Are you following me now? Two farmers holding a hoe together. And you are going to the farm to go and plow the land. Ready-made relationship does not exist. Write it. Everybody has weaknesses and strengths. When you say you love somebody next time, you are saying you love a sum total of their liabilities and weaknesses. Many of you want a perfect man. You want a perfect woman. You will never find it because you are not perfect yourself. Are you listening to me? Now, Ebe, where are you from? You are from Kogi. Where are you from? Benin. Now, this is Kogi. This is Benue. Two separate cultures. Is that true? Now, they love God. They all come for Koinonia, for instance. For instance. For instance. Except otherwise. For instance. Hallelujah. She has her mindset that came from culture. He has his mindset that came from culture. Do you know that there will be frictions? Are you following me now? Those frictions are not a sign that the devil is eating you people up. They are just a sign that you are human beings. Are you listening to me? What is the remedy? Communication. Two of you sit down now. Find somewhere and sit down. Come. Empty the shift for them. Sit down now. We are asking with you people. Communication. Communication. Talk about it. Hallelujah. The guy does not eat pepper. You, you like pepper. You like seeing the pepper. You can carry it and put it in your mouth. The first day you made gari for him. You put pepper. You were smiling. Ah, the guy just touched it and a headache just came on him. And now the brother doesn't want to talk. Ah, this pepper is killing him. He said, do you like it for him? I said, come on. This food was as sweet as you. And now you are, you are lying. Tomorrow you will suffer it again. She will make beans. Add pepper on it. She'll be telling everybody, you know my guy likes my cooking. He likes the pepper. Funny enough, this guy is dying. This pepper is killing him. Every time you eat her food, you must have a runny nose. Brother, what happened? Don't say forget this. Everybody say communication. Communication helps you to understand yourself. The Bible says husbands Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. Love is not enough. Are you hearing me? Have you not seen a lovely roommate that you could not live with? How many of you love your roommates but you cannot take that same roommate next session? But you love them. Some of you, you that, some of you that are raising hands is your roommates that don't love you because of what you are doing. Hallelujah. Everybody say communication. It will enhance your relationship. Are you listening to me? There are many ladies that the moment you enter a relationship, you already have your expectations that only you know. I expect, at least I give this relationship five days, I should visit Chicken Republic. That's what you have in your heart. That's what you have wished and wondered. Every time I'm holding load, let the guy, that's what you have in your heart. Are you following me now? After five days, he doesn't take you out. He's paining you, but you cannot talk. Say it so that if it's not godly, you can flog it together. Are you listening to me? Communication. 
is one of the number one killer. Roommates that don't talk always fight. The only way to know that he's angry is when he slaps you. You say, did he really hurt you? He says, it has been burning me. Why didn't you talk, Oga okay, roommate? Why didn't you talk? Many ladies, you are like that. You don't talk. You go and grumble to your friends and gossip to everybody and say, this guy, we went to the restaurant, Sam. They were putting the ice cream on the machine, chicken Republic. He just started taking it. Couldn't we sit down? Me, I hate this thing. And you were laughing all through the euphoria of the excitement. And the guy thought that that's what you like. He will repeat it again tomorrow. Hallelujah. You invited him for dinner. He wore one tie. The shirt was torn. He didn't notice. It wasn't his business. You tell him, ah, sweetheart, um, see, when there is this chemistry between both of you, you have come to be honest and true to yourselves. Are you following me now? And you can jokingly tell him, say, you, self, I'm going to buy you a new, a new trouser. That your trouser has tried. She has come into your life. You don't joke. You are always serious. You are always praying. You are always fasting. You don't discuss the things you should discuss. If all you are doing in your relationship is Bible study and prayer, you are not helping that relationship. Okay, sister, the Lord gave me a revelation. Shut up. Can't you talk about your life? Are you not good? What is your best food? There are people, if we call some people in relationship now, you and you, what is your best food? The guy will say, Gary, is his best food. You, you say, it's, it's beef. You don't know yourself. You are that much of strangers. Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, you know. What are the twelve names of disciples? You know, you know. When is Jesus coming? Soon, soon, you know. Where are two of you going? You don't know. Don't spiritualize things that you are supposed to do to help yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Everybody say communication. Very important. There must be communication. During a relationship. Number two. Set boundaries. Everybody say boundaries. Paul said, the, although we are not under the law, but the Bible says the love of God does what? Please set boundaries. Some of you were in the world. Is that correct? And you had relationships where you were in the world. You could have sex anytime you want. You can spend weekend in the guy's house anytime you want. You can bath with the guy in the same bathroom. Now you are born again. You have left Egypt. Forced Egypt to leave your mind. In Jesus name. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Hallelujah. You must set boundaries. Stand up again. Two of you come. This side, this side. Let's go. So you discuss. Abel. You are a great man. No, you are going far. But you are a man. Say I'm a man. Part of the reason why you ask this lady out is because you are physically attracted to her. True or false? Please say it. True or false? That means if you get married to her, you will sleep with her one day. True or false? And the reason why you are not sleeping with her now is not because you are an angel or a spirit. It's because you love the Lord. True or false? When you enter a relationship, you are vulnerable by default. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, believers? What does that mean? You define it. What rules that you don't define, you will cross boundaries without knowing. You can be a Christian. Over 60% or more of Christian relationships have people sleeping around. The guy going to spend weekend in the girl's house. The girl going to from Koinonia now. Today is Friday, Abby. The grace of our Lord Jesus, your load is outside. You just carry, the guy takes you in his car. And he just goes, I was a service. Say, nice. Even if he's banishing, you watch throughout that night. Sin is at your door. Correct? Say, but me, I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't used to sleep with the guy. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going every day. The Bible says, and Lord settled near Sodom. He didn't enter Sodom. When they were coming to rescue him, where did they find him? In the middle of Sodom. This is how many people have gotten themselves into trouble. Discuss it. Sister, 
You are not firewood. Discuss it. You are emotional. Talk. Abel, you tell her. Say, look, I love God. And in this relationship, we are going to keep the values of the kingdom. If for any reason, any spirit or anything turns my head one day, don't be ashamed. This is somebody, are you saying it in the presence of the congregation? Please, help me. Don't be disappointed that day. Just help me. Slap me. Or run, just do something. Remind me of my destiny. Just put a picture of hellfire on your phone. Do something that will help me. Sister, listen. And I must say this. Listen, we are humans. Church people are hypocrites and liars. Me, I'm not like that. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Very important. You can't come and visit him by 11.30 in the night. Eh? He just had practicals morning till night. Then you came around. You say, I, 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 was, I was reading and I didn't know what to do with myself. Ah, you are looking for trouble, oh. You are looking for trouble. The brother is already on his boxers. He's trying to lie down. He's trying to sleep. Now you come in. He's going to marry you one day, oh. He's going to marry you one day. You are fast forwarding that day now. You will die. You are there to protect the brother's life, not to kill him. Can't you talk on phone? Am I, am I blessing you? This is the issue. I know we are out of time. We will pray, but we need to talk about this. It's very important. There are many anointed brothers that suddenly entered relationships and they found out that they are, they are sleeping with the lady and doing a lot of things to their own shock. Because number one, you didn't discuss it. Number two, you are not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Very important. You must talk about it. Your roommates sleep around and they come and they are talking about all their experiences. All those devilish things. And you sit down, you are hearing it. Now it's affecting your mind. You don't know. You think because you are a Christian, it will just... No, it's affecting your mind. You are getting emotional. You are getting seduced by that statement. Before you know it, you find yourself and the innocent brother, because he likes you, who fall victim. Everybody say, I, I receive grace to set boundaries. Christians, I know what I'm saying may offend some of you because it's a kind of beg that your own. You have gone too extreme. Please, Abba. Well, if your destiny is colorful and you want to get there, Ask yourself a question. Are you ready for a child now? If you are not, behave. Brother, for every time you sleep with a lady, see the vision of a baby. Are you ready? If you are not, behave. Praise the Lord. Please define boundaries. Christian relationships should reveal the character of Christ. And you, sister... One day something comes upon the brother, whatever it is. Instead of you to help the brother, you now start going around. Ah! These brothers, I'm surprised. Oh, Koinonia, shut up, please. Did he tell you it's a spirit? Help him. Help him. Help him. Don't disgrace the brother. Oh, I will talk. Hallelujah. It's very important. Help the brother. And brother, help the sister. When she's calling you and you don't understand what she's saying in the phone. Be talking with one ear, be praying. Find a way, let your spirit be praying. Talk about the second coming of Jesus. Talk about the end of the age. Just say something that will bring the sister back to herself. Don't go and spend weekend in a guy's house. You are not married to him. All the sisters say amen. I know many Christian ladies. Once it's Friday, somebody comes from Lagos or somewhere. You go and spend, how can you go and spend weekend in the house of somebody you are already emotionally attached 
and physically attracted to. You are vulnerable. Hallelujah. You are going to go and bath. The brother is watching you. Ah. You, are, you want to kill the brother? You are bathing. The guy is just singing choruses around your bathroom. Or God go to the parlor. Trouble. If a guy lives in a house and you go, you can enter the parlor, you can enter the kitchen. But you, you begin to put yourself in trouble. See, all I'm trying to say is that create boundaries. Can I tell you something? Brother, when you start sleeping with a lady, I assure you, your chances of marrying her will diminish by a sizable factor. Because part of the things that you should make, how, make you want that lady is that she's keeping herself and is supposed to be the blessing and consummation of marriage. Are you listening to me? Sister, you just open up yourself to any brother. He's just sleeping with you and telling you that, don't worry, in two weeks I'll give you an engagement ring. You wait and go and hear what he's saying in the midst of his friends. Hallelujah. Do you know, every time you sleep with a lady or you sleep with a guy, that you are not married with. There is a seed of resentment and hatred that comes. That's what happened between Adam and Eve when they went out of the glory of God. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you watch every kind of film. The guy is here, the lady is here. You are watching all kinds. Please, God bless you. Please be seated. You are watching every kind of film. When I talk about all those film things, some of you think it's not an issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put boundaries. Avoid things that arouse you people. Avoid things that arouse you people and get you into trouble. Hallelujah. You just see the guy. You just come and fly on the guy. He's on the bed. You just... Ah! And the brother is smiling as if he's in control of things. You better, you better start praying. You are not in control. Very important. Hmm. Hallelujah. Build together. Everybody say, I will define boundaries. You are in a relationship right now. You have not defined the boundaries. Do it tomorrow. Define it. How far is far? How far is far? Please define it. Hallelujah. Now, I'll round up with this. There are many other things, but we're out of time. We really are out of time. Just give me a few minutes, five minutes, and we're out. Danger signs. Oh, this is important. You must write it. Danger signs that your relationship is no diving or that your relationship may not work out. Danger signs. I must say this, very important. Number one, when you find yourself consistently violating boundaries, that relationship may not work out. Did you hear what I said? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Consistently violating boundaries. No way. A time will come, look at me, the lady will be so cheap or the guy will be so cheap. They will be like a rag for you. Discontent will enter your heart. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Take these boundaries issues seriously. I know some of you feel, why is he talking like this? Okay. Once you are consistently violating boundaries, every night, Every weekend, you are coming to his house. All kinds of things. No. Your chances of getting married are being slashed down seriously. Number two. Number two danger sign. Excessive involvement of third parties in your relationship. This is very important. There are many of us, the number of counselors and senators and members of the House of Assembly in your relationship are too much. Too much. You have a senate that decides on everything. You want to cook for the guy. Upper house, lower house. 
must decide. Two of you cannot slog out issues. This is what is killing many relationships. Hallelujah. There is too much involvement of third parties. Let me tell you something. God is my witness. And for years we've been doing this. Once we pray for people and bless their relationships, you can ask Pastor Jakes, we stay out. Are you listening to me? We don't come and say, oh, we are leaders over you and we are just put No, we stay out. We only come in if you invite us or where we see that there is a need. Are you listening to me? Listen, if your friend enters a relationship, please stay out. What I mean stay out is define boundaries. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are too involved in the relationship of your friends and loved ones. We don't even know whether it's the friends that are in relationship or you are the one. You are too involved. You can veto things on behalf of your friend that is in a relationship. It's their business. Leave them alone. Please. Go and pray and wait for your own. Leave them alone. Excessive involvement of third parties. Once you start allowing too many people to come into you, they will confuse you, they will make you to make wrong decisions. At the end of it, that relationship will not work. Danger sign number two. Danger sign number three. When you find yourself, this is important, when you are consistently quarreling and manifesting rage over trivial issues, just know that that relationship has entered the beginning of the end. Look up, please. Look up. When Zuera's food suddenly stops being sweet, promise. Food that you used to eat every day. You were lean like you would die. When you entered the relationship, it improved on you. Now you can see Zuera's food is not sweet again. Her hairstyle is not nice again. Are you following me now? Her text messages are not... Once you find yourself edgy over trivial things, your heart has left that relationship. Is someone learning something in this place? Quarreling over trivial issues. Do you know why? There is a scripture, we will not read it. But the Bible says, 1 Peter 4 verse 8. It says, I believe 1 Peter 4 verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Look at me. When you love someone, you will give excuses for the person. Is that true? Yeah, danger sign. I like the red. Media, God bless you. Red. Danger sign. Quarreling and manifesting rage. You see a guy just comes. This is a lady that before, she's your queen. Eh? Transpose, let me sing a song. By two or three keys. You are the reason I'm here. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. That's the song you sang. Oh, don't forget. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. Smile. And the lady is just smiling. Now, listen. Suddenly, I've got my mind made up. Addressing that attracted you to her suddenly becomes insulting. Everything. Everything. Once you find that kind of quarrel, please, let me tell you something. If you are not ready to marry her, leave her alone. Somebody else will like her. Don't put any lady under your care and frustrate her. Are you listening to me? Sisters, I must tell you this. Danger sign that your relationship will not last. If the guy you are going out with does not have anybody he listens to, are you listening to me? Don't ever go out with anybody that cannot listen to people. He will kill you. One day he will beat you, stand on you and be stamping you and you will die there and nobody will know. There are some of us, you are going out with guys nobody knows. They don't listen to anybody. Nobody can talk to them. Pastor Jake says, oh, I want to see him. He says, no, please, leave me. That kind of thing will not help you. Hallelujah. 
when you see these three things, three things happen. Your relationship is nose diving. You need counseling and you need help fast. Hallelujah. Number four. Maybe we'll talk about, we'll still talk about it next. We'll stop here. Because I still have a lot of things to talk about. There are two issues I want to talk about that many people don't discuss in relationship. Number one is on the issue of health and marriage. But we'll talk about that next week. Is that correct? Health and marriage. This has become a serious issue. If somebody is an SS and she comes and she's in a relationship with somebody who is an SS, can it work? Will they work? Hallelujah. And then the issue of crossing boundaries. Hallelujah. Somebody from Katsina marries an Irobo lady. What, what happens when you are crossing boundaries? The place of family and so on and so forth. And then we'll address the issue of late marriage. Family life, there is a lot we'll talk about. How many of you have been blessed so far? Rise up, let's pray. We'll take that next week. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray for one minute. Say, Lord, thank you for your wisdom. I believe that God has spoken to many people tonight. There are many of you that need to change things. You need to adjust things tonight. Very quickly, I'm going to pray. Please pray. We're out of here. Please pray. Those of you who have crossed boundaries in your relationship, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I ask for grace. Honestly. Be honest with yourself. No one condemns you, but be honest. Virtues that you need to build. Teachability. Some of you sisters need to go and work on yourself seriously. The way you are right now, you will not be a blessing to any man. You can be a blessing, Kai, but you are not yet a blessing. Same with the brothers. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. I want my marriage to glorify you. I want my relationship to glorify you. I don't want my children to come and find a curse. I'm tired of the things that I saw in my own family. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I was preparing for this, the Lord told me to take one altar call and I'm going to pray. Just one virtue I want to pray for people. If you have been, the Lord told me this, please. If you know that you have a problem with anger and temper, I'm going to pray for you. Listen. Don't stand there judging the people that are coming out. Are you hearing me? This is a family. None of your business is their personal affair with God. It may not be that you want it so. There are people. It's this, the guys and ladies. You just find you can be angry. It's one of the things that is stopping you. I'm going to take an altar call. Please. Find, come out and come and forget about nobody is really has any business with you whether or not you are. please come out quickly inside and outside be honest before God come and kneel down here just kneel down and line up here a p- rage and temper some of you is what has destroyed your former relationships don't be afraid don't let anybody scorn you please hurry up everybody come and kneel down Come out of her right now. Now, devil of. Come out. Come out now. Come out of her. Come out. Come out of her. It's a spirit. It's not your fault. Don't pretend. Listen. Listen. Don't stay outside. When you should be here. Don't pretend. This relationship series is to... Let me tell you, Koinonia is a family. Nobody has time for you. Everybody has time for their own destiny. Some of you, this is what has killed your relationship. You get into a relationship, anger, rage. You can carry anything. 
you can carry bottle and tear the guy's head and tell him sorry later on. This is demonic. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. You are a Christian. Nobody is doubting your salvation. God wants to help you. Some of you are very kind. But if the brother dear does anything, you will give it to him from your mind. You don't know why you are doing it. Lift your hands. Because I'm seeing a lot of spirits. I'm going to pray. When I pray, the power of God will move across this congregation. That thing will be broken. Are you listening to me? We've taken time, but let's pray. Our relationship series is not just about love. We are setting people free. This is what is stopping some people. When I was preparing, the Lord told me, make sure you pray against this. This is why some of you cannot enter. You are a pretty lady. You love God. You are sincere. Lift your hands, everybody. Rage. Lift your hands very high because I'm about to pray. Fire will fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit behind temper and rage, right now, in the name that is above all names, let the fire of God move across this congregation. Come out of God's people now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Shake it. That spirit of anger, that spirit of rage, let the power of God move across right now. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. Come out. Go. 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 Those of you in front, lift up your hands, please. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. And I declare that every spirit of anger, while you are praying it, some of you, you will feel something leaving you literally. It will jump out of you. I tell you, you just keep praying. It will jump out of you. Say in the name of Jesus, this spirit of anger, this spirit of rage, come out of me right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I declare, look at me. There are many of you that are in beautiful relationships. God ordained relationships. But this spirit of anger and rage, when you are angry, you can do anything. This is what has destroyed you. Somebody offends you, it will take hundred days saying, I'm sorry before you accept. It's satanic. Tonight be delivered in the name of Jesus. Tonight I declare you free in the name of Jesus. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please rise up and go back to your seat quickly. Now, the second altar call. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Some of you don't need to go too far because you're coming back. Please, don't pretend it. You've never given your heart to the Lord. That's the greatest relationship you must have. Inside and outside. As you hear His voice right now. Or you've given your heart to the Lord once. And you found yourself derailing. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. Please appreciate them because they are coming. believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, call 081-38-32-54-63 or 080-33-50-8735 or 080-34-00-3936. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Parenting Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia 
underscore KLI. You can also download our messages on www.forshared.com. Thank you, Network International, for protecting the owners of God's life and earth.